On this episode of Delivering Marketing Joy, we take a look back at some of the greatest hits from some of the greatest answers off Delivering Marketing Joy. So, speaking of being a mentor, I know I've heard you speak before saying Zig Ziglar was a mentor to you. Um, maybe this isn't a fair question, but what, what was like the biggest lesson he taught you? You know, I did a blog post a few years ago called Mentors and Heroes, and I strongly encourage people who are looking for a mentor to read it. Mm-hmm. Zig wasn't my mentor. Zig was my hero. Okay. And the difference is, even though he and I knew each other, and I was lucky enough to work with him on a couple occasions, he wasn't the mentor in the sense that there's a human who's spending a really scarce resource on one person. It doesn't scale. Right? I've been super lucky to have actually work with my heroes. Mm-hmm. I worked with Tom Peters and I worked with Jay Levinson, but that's unusual. Mm-hmm. In our society today, it's ever easier to find heroes and to ask yourself, what would they do? Mm-hmm. Right? What would Sue do? What would uh, Bailey do? Because we can then process the way that they think. Um, so, you know, what did I take away from Zig? I think the thing that the most often comes to mind is his idea of go lights instead of stop lights. That, as, as Ben Zander would say and, and his wife, Roz, uh, the idea of possibility. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll be on an airplane and someone will say, the flight attendant said, how are you doing? I say, I'm fantastic. And she would say, really? What happened? I say, I decided three days ago I was going to be fantastic today and it worked. It's just a decision. Yeah. Yeah. That, it, actually, it's what I love about Zig is he's transcended, right? I, I still listen to his uh, inspirational things. And I, that's when you talk about legacy, that's, that's an amazing legacy to have that people listen to you years and years past your own lifetime. So one of the things I know about you is you are very much into networking. Now, most sales professionals will tell you that networking is important to business and I think that's interesting, but there really aren't like classes in colleges about it. I mean, if it's that important, why do you think, you know, universities or or classes, they don't spend more time on on networking? Well, it's interesting that you bring that up because I've studied that for quite a while. Um, My networking experience when I was first getting into this business was actually literally had to call uh, companies and cold call them. And I had to get really, really good at that really fast if I wanted to keep my job. <laughs> um, since then, though, I, I've experienced that most of the, if not all of the colleges and universities around the country will first and foremost tell you that there is a tremendous need for skills to know how to connect with people. And yet they devote not even one semester to it for students who are going to graduate and go out there and try to figure out how to do their career. So it's always been an interesting thing to me. The other thing is, is that I was taught by uh, uh, a mentor years ago on how to network. And his method of, of networking probably on the surface sounds really good to everybody. Because what he would do and what I would teach is, is that if you had 100 people in a room and you were going to go to a networking event, let's say, um, I could teach you how in 10 minutes to just segment out the, the one or two people that were are going to be your target market and pretty much summarily dismiss the other 98. (laughs) And every time I would do that, Kirby, every time I would do that, there was part of my heart that would say, no, 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 we're missing a big, big thing here if we're going to dismiss the other 98 people in the room. And so I really started to make a study of it. I started to interview people, you know, our clients, and I, I started to talk to a lot of other distributors, and I'd say, well, you know, what was it like for you? And they would say, well, you know, you know, half of them actually were scared to go to a, to a networking event, stand up and introduce themselves because they didn't have a clever enough 30-second elevator speech. And so I started really, really investigating this. But the big thing for me came up in 2008. 2008 was really a tough time for us and a lot of people. Sure. And what I found out in that process was is that I thought I knew everything there was to know about networking because my networking policy was to go in, go find the two or three of, of the room, and just uh, you know consistently stay after them until they either told me to just go away or they would become my clients. 
And as I looked around, I realized that everybody had been pretty much taught the same thing. You're just supposed to, you know, hammer this thing until you can't anymore, until you beat them into submission or something, and then make them a client. That's not all there is to it at all. And in 2008, what I learned very, very uh, clearly was is that the clients and the customers and the people that I actually still to this day deal with on a regular basis are people who I created relationships with even to the point where I created relationships with the other 98% of the room who would never buy from me. It still pays off today. But you and I have talked in the past about, and, and it was one of my favorite conversations where we talked about, it was ironically a famous person, right? Why Rob Lowe was making you do 100,000 push-ups or whatever. Right. And, but, right. but the lesson in that for it is that you know a little bit every day moves the meter. Um, mm -hmm. I took a lot from that. I thought that was really a powerful message. So has this sort of worked? You were talking about how this being a numbers game. Has that sort of philosophy worked in trying to make contacts with others or is that kind of totally separate? No, it's the same thing. I, I sit down and like yesterday, this Kirk thing I just did last night oh, okay. and I had an answer this morning at like four in the morning. <laughs> so, but I sat down yesterday evening, I was watching the Olympics and you don't have to pay rigid attention to the Olympics, but it's on. And so I just thought, you know, I'm going to try Kirk. And I, I have five or six other people that I decided to try. And I just sat there and it was kind of casual. And I figured out my approach. They're all people I know something about. Mm. And the reason I want to talk to them and interview them is because I am interested. Yeah. It's not like I looked around and said, okay, who's the hot name? Mm. Let me try that. Because I don't know enough about the hot name to make it personal. Yeah. So... But every week I try to send out five, six, seven things. Um, I've, for whatever reason, I've gotten in like with NASCAR, um, Hendrick Motorsports is probably the biggest team in NASCAR, and I'm I seem to be best buddies with their PR people now. <laughs> um, but, you know, and they they got me a conversation with Rick Hendrick, which is notoriously hard to do. He's the guy that owns the place, um, and. But it is a, it's, it's reps, you know, it's reps. grinding it out and it's like, okay, let me try, let me try, let me try. You don't get discouraged when one doesn't go well. You get happy when one does and it motivates you to keep going. But it is a, it's a process. Yeah. And along the way, the other thing about doing, you don't want to be so numbers oriented that you're saying, okay, I'm going to do a hundred of these a week mm -hmm. because clearly there's no meaning and there's no connection there. But you'd be surprised by the connections that you make that you wouldn't have thought you would make that turn out to be really beneficial. His idea of goal lights instead of stop lights. That as, as Ben Zander would say and, and his wife Roz, uh, the idea of possibility. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll be on an airplane and someone will say, the flight attendant said, how are you doing? I say, I'm fantastic. And she would say, really? What happened? I said, I decided three days ago I was going to be fantastic today and it worked. It's just a decision. Yeah. Thanks for watching, but wait, can you do me a favor? Please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't done it already, the way to do it's right over here. And hey, if you want to watch the last episode, check that out over here. Again, before you leave, subscribe.